Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to show you something I've been really excited about, and that is M Cabinet. And if you're wondering, you think like, okay, what is M Cabinet? And basically what it is, it's something that's used generally for guitar, although it can be used for other things, and it's supposed to simulate the sound of a guitar speaker, a guitar cabinet. And you're probably thinking like, oh, it's kind of like an impulse response. And it is, but it's actually not an impulse response. It's an EQ, but just a very, very advanced one. So this will be very useful to you if you're somebody that doesn't want to use impulse responses or you don't have any impulse res responses. Or even if you have lots of impulse responses, this can be very useful because it'll allow you to generate more or even alter the impulse responses you have to make them more pleasing to you. So let's get started and I'll try to explain as we go. So open it up here. You see it, this is the default setting, and there's lots of things we can do here, but let me let you listen to it first on just an example. Uh, let's turn the dry down, output up. So here's an example with just nothing on it here. Okay, so now if we take that, we'll go into here, default, let's look at the mono. So also you can change the sound from mono to stereo if you want to do that. Let's go to mono. I'll search here for low, like low gain sounds. And let's just try a few. So look at this one. And you can see down at the bottom here, this is the EQ curve. So let's look, or let's listen actually. <laughs> Another one. I'm going to try one or two more. And just one more for good measure. So you can hear it's making some changes to the actual sound. So that's the good thing. And there's lots of other examples here. But let's show you something else. It's a little bit harder to hear for clean tones than it is for distorted tones. But I think you can still kind of hear it. And something I should say here is hopefully you like the sound of these presets. But if you don't, it really doesn't matter because there's a lots of flexibility. You could change these. So if you find these too bassy or... Uh, they have too much treble or too much mids. You can easily go in and change that however you want. But uh, let's listen to this other example. Let me bypass this first. You can hear the dry sound of this. It's like a funk example. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Let's turn it on and go through a few of the presets. So you can hear how the low end, the mids, the treble, all of them are changing with each of these examples. And you can not only do that, but you can also like widen it in stereo, and you can also do some effects to the EQ where it sounds like there's reverb or a little bit of like a room sound added. And of course, if you like these effects, you can increase them, and if you dislike them, you can decrease them, which I think is one of the like main uh, powers, the selling point of this plugin is it's great. You can adjust exactly how much you want. You want more ambience? You can do that. You want less ambience? You can do that too. You can make it bassier. You can make it, uh, you know, uh, treblier, if that's a word. <laughs> and, and basically alter it however you want. But let's keep going and let's do another one. This is kind of like a, a dirtier, like a crunch example. Turn this off and open this back up. Let's listen to this. So 
So, gave you a few hints of that. Uh, let's do one more for this kind of crunchy stuff here. Here we go. Maybe I shouldn't switch in the middle there. It's kind of <laughs> glitching out there. So I'll try a few other ones so you can just kind of hear what the sounds like. Uh, this. Okay, and let's do one more with some kind of like high gain examples. Uh, move that there. Move this to the next one. And also, I should say that for these, I didn't make these examples with this in mind. So if you're thinking, hey, some of these are a little bit too uh, bassy or trebly, that's why. I didn't adjust any of the controls on the amp sounds I was using for this. So maybe if you think, oh, it's too bassy, of course you can fix that in there, but. Uh, that's probably why. So let's go over this one here. Uh, more high gain sound. So as you can hear, there's lots of you know different sounds in there. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to hear another one? I'll do one more example, more like high gain, like a lead sound. So as you can hear, there's lots of variation between there, but of course there's more if you want that. And let me show you one more that's not one of these. So one of the really cool things is you can use this for other things besides just like guitar cabinets. So here I have a just a dry sound of me playing through the bridge pickup of one of my guitars. Here we go. Let me turn this off. Okay, so what I can do is I can change this to a more like acoustic sound. So I'll just go into here. And if you see this, it says electric to acoustic. And I'll just choose one. I'll choose this one that says workhorse. Okay, I'll probably have to turn up the output a little bit more so you can hear it. But now, let's listen to it. <laughs> Okay, let's try another one. And let's just do one more. There we go. Like this. Okay, so those are like some examples. I hope that gave you an idea of what they sound like. Let me just do a brief overview of what some of the controls do and how it works. In a future video, I'll go more in depth in this about what you can do and how you do things. But if you look down here at the bottom, the profile, 
and you're wondering like okay like what is this or where is this coming from so this is basically the iq or saying i not iq eq profile of uh what is being played through the filter and so you see here there's a black line that's the profile and the blue line is actually what's being output and that's being altered so first you get the profile and you're wondering like where do you get this from and so there's a few different ways you can do this actually two main ways so there's of course you could use some presets here so there's already some profiles loaded but also you can go into here and it says analyze ir folder what this will do is you have IR, so let's say you have like an IR pack or you made some IRs yourself and you have like quite a few of them, you can just use that folder of those specific IRs and it'll analyze them and it'll make a profile that is an average of everything in that folder. And I would recommend that you use like a similar sounding cabinet, so don't mix like 15 different speakers together because it'll give you a strange result. But if let's say you had uh, one speaker, but you had maybe five different mics. You could use those and put those together to get an average, and that'll kind of give you the average of what the speaker sounds like. And then from there, you can do that. Or also, if let's say you go to your studio and you make one IR, and then you think, ah, I like that, but I kind of want to make more, instead of using a whole folder, you can just use Analyze IR for just one. And so from there, you get the profile, and then you're thinking, okay, what do I do from there? And so here, you see, like, I actually use this. You can use the EQ down here. So... If you want to move this, like the high pass filter, the low pass filter is here. Also, you see here I'm using a shelf filter. You're like, oh, where'd this come from? So if you look here, you'll see they're kind of uh, transparent. There's a bunch of other filters in here that you can mess with. If you're thinking like, hey, what if I want another shelf or something like that? Just right click it and you see it has this big menu where it has all of these different types of filters you can mess with and play with. And so... One of the great things is it has lots of like controls over the Q, the gain, etc. If you want to use two high pass filters, you can use the one that's already included here plus another one in here. And there's just all sorts of things you can do with it that you can't do with uh, some program uh, plugin. So you have like a high pass filter, you can do all sorts of slopes and things if you want, etc. But also you'll notice it has this dynamics control. So if you want to do some compression along with the uh, EQ, you can do that. It's a full dynamic EQ in here. And this harmonics thing, which you may or may not understand here. Basically, this will add harmonics, like an octave up. Or I guess, I guess following the harmonic series. Oop, sorry. So if you look here, I have four. Ooh, I'm moving around too much, sorry. And here, if I turn the harmonics up, you see, like, oh, it adds more. Turn up the Q value so you can see it. Ooh, there. So you can see it's adding harmonics there and so that's useful sometimes if you want to subtract things or you know whatever you might want to do so hope that gave you an idea of what the eq can do uh also i know sometimes people complain about like irs like oh, i can't get it steep enough to cut off what i want but of course here hp filter is off 6 12 all the way up to 120 so you got lots of room to do stuff with on top of that for this uh filter actually the profile you see here, it's a blue line. I think I said the black line before. It's actually the blue line. It's the profile. So you can do things with that also. So you see here, it says profile smoothing. If you do that, it'll smooth this out like this. Oh, wow. Like that. Um, also, the normal smoothing does something similar. These are a little bit different, but I'll go over that in the separate video. Uh, flattening. What this will do is it'll make it flatter. So if I move that up, see, it's almost flat. And if I do it the other way, it makes it more curved. You can see this better with uh, more guitar speaker IRs. Um, also, like the tilt up and down like that. Uh, with other speaker IRs, it'll make a bigger difference. Uh, widening, etc. So I don't want to go over all of those. I thought I'd go over the next one, these resonators. So if I turn this on, you'll see, if you look here, what's happening with the uh, black line, I believe. Yeah. Actually, no, it is the blue line that's changing. I, I keep getting confused. It's the black line's the profile. It's the blue line that is what's actually being output. So you're thinking, like, what is this doing? So this is adding some small EQ moves in here. And you can control this in a number of ways. So you see here where it says bass, mid, and treble. These will adjust these um, I guess I, or say EQ notches. And it'll just kind of change them randomly like this. So I'm changing the mids. If you look in the mids here while I'm changing it. Or in the high end, it'll change that. Or the bass, it'll change that, etc. And you're thinking, like, that's not doing too much. But now I have the depth at 85%. If I move it up, it'll do more. 
you know, change, do even more changes. And now I have the smoothing at 50%. But if I move it down, you see like, oh, wow, there's lots of different ridges here and bump. But if I move it up even higher, you'll get fewer ridges, but they'll move more, more dramatic moves when I move this around. And on top of that, if you go into the advanced here, you'll see like, oh, there's other things. I can smooth it out if I want to uh, for the treble or bass. I can change the crossover. So where the bass is located, where the mids or treble are located. And I can use multiples of these together. I can use one and two if I want. Or if I think, hey, I don't want to spend all my time just clicking bass and treble. There's some presets in here so you can try these if you want uh, to make your own sounds. And let me see, last one, there's more of these, there's four of them, which is probably too much for most people, and then there's a widening. And so what this will do, it will take make your sound uh, sound like stereo. So let me move this up higher. So I'll let you hear it first without it on, so just as it is with the resonators, like this. And enable it so you can make it seem wider. And you can actually control this. So if you think like, ah, I want more, you can turn it to 100%. If you think, oh, that's crazy, I don't want that. Move it down to like 20% or so. And if you like that kind of added ambience, you don't want it to be in stereo, just turn it down. Okay, and one last thing you're probably saying, like, oh, this is cool and all, but what if I don't want to use this? I just want to load, like, an IR in my favorite uh, software modeler or even my hardware modeler, so this isn't for me. But actually, that's not true. Something I should have probably said at the beginning is that this can export IRs fairly easily. So all you have to do is look here where it says Menu, and it says Export IR. Click that and just... Click wherever you want your directory in your computer, and it'll export this, whatever this blue is here, out for you. So you can make it stereo, you can make it uh, you know, mono if you want to, you can add the resonances you want to. If you don't like the resonances, you can remove them. So you can alter IRs you already have, you can make completely new IRs. Uh, in another video, I'll show you how you can make an IR from scratch if you want to. If you want to make your own IRs just using EQ, you can do that. Uh, also, if you want to see another graphical representation of this, you can go here and this will show you how it will actually look in like a, what is this called? I don't know what this kind of diagram is, but you can see what it's doing here. So if you alter these, you can see like, oh, wow, it's really changing what this looks like. Or change this, like, oh, really change things. So it gives you that graphical representation if that's what you want to see. And on top of that, just like all the other Melda plugins, it has these multi-parameters you can mess with and hook up to these different things. So I know I didn't go over everything, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what this does. And I'll do more videos in the future about all the cool things you can do with this. And also, like I said, it's not just for guitar. You can do the same thing for bass, or if you wanted to make an IR for your you know, electric uh, violin or something, it's also possible to do that. So I'll try to show you how to do those things in the future. But if you have any questions, leave those below. Give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at MeltaProduction.com. Until next time, see you.